CPL products have been operating in Ingham Briketting Works since 1989. Uh, we have two uh, mild heat treatment plants that manufacture, capable of manufacturing up to 350,000 tonnes of uh, solid fuel smokeless briquettes a year. Uh, we have a product range of uh, 24 different products presently, made of 15 unique and in different shapes. This plant is probably the most advanced briquetting plant in Europe in terms of what it can make, the range of products, the amount of products. The plant runs 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. We take time out for major plant shutdowns, about three weeks on each plant in a year. So we have 49 weeks of continual running. The whole principle behind the briquetting plant is to take the coal fines from coal production, which is essentially what the person mining the coal doesn't want. It's a waste product for them. And we then can take different coals, mix them together in different size briquettes and make unique and different products for the customer to burn as, as required for their appliance. The coal is delivered to site and stored on the appropriate stockpile. What we then do is from the testing of that coal, generate a recipe and what this recipe does it gives information to the production plant of the the coals that's involved and, and the percentages of the, of the blend that it makes up. What we have then is four infeed hoppers on the plant and the shovel driver in the yard will load the correct coal into the correct infeed hopper. We then have a blending plant that runs under these hoppers and basically there's a belt that runs under each hopper that runs at a speed defined by the control room where the recipe is entered and it delivers exactly the right amount of each of the constituents into the plant. These coals are then, from then on, a mixing as they go through the plant. At that point, we're looking at coal or a blended mix of around 8 to 14% moisture. And it's very important for us in the process to dry that coal down to about 1% moisture. So we do that through a coal dryer. We then take the dry coal and we crush it down to a talcum powder to 3 millimeter consistency. As the coal is dried, it's then very well mixed as it goes into the, the batch mixer for the binder to be added. And immediately prior to the binder being added, a sample of that coal is taken and tested. And from that test, we can determine that we've exactly met the parameters of the blend. Then we uh, introduce it into our batch mixer. And the whole point of the mixer is to add the binder very accurately to the, to the coal blend. So we turn the process from a continuous process then into a batch process, whereby we measure 800 kilos to a ton of uh, dry coal. We then open the, the door at the bottom of the hopper into the mixer itself, which is a huge cylinder on its side with a shaft right through with plows on, which mixes the coal with very high energy. The mixer then weighs the amount of product in it and adds specifically the amount of binder that's required. We use uh, a molasses based binder in the region of 15 to 20% of binder. And what that does is coats the mix and at that point it's soft and ready for pressing. The, uh, the mix then comes out the bottom of the mixer into a hopper and is fed towards the press. The basic principle is that there's two wheels at the front, two wheels at the back that turn counterclockwise to each other. The mix comes in at the top and the briquette comes out at the bottom. There's a huge pressure exerted by hydraulics to hold these tyres together at the correct gap to make sure that the product is the same size and thickness all the time. And we then take the briquettes very gently down to the curing oven. At that point, the shape uh, can be uh, crushed by hand because the uh, strength is not yet within the finished briquette. But we gain that strength by pushing the uh, briquettes through an oven on a conveyor for an hour. The temperature is up to around 300 degrees and the molasses within the mix there solidifies, hardens and produces a, a robust product. What we then have to do is quench the briquettes because of the, the heat within the oven, uh, otherwise the, the briquettes would catch fire. We quench it with water, it absorbs a little bit of moisture into the outer skin of the briquette, but that moisture through the heat, the briquettes at that point are around 60, 50, 60 degrees, and on the stockpile a lot of this moisture steams off uh, as vapour. The, pr the process is referred to as a mild heat treatment process, and what that means is that the temperature of the coal at any point doesn't get beyond where it alters its characteristic or, or nature. So the coal in the briquette at the end is the same as the coal that was put into the process in the first place. All we've done is we've added a binder and modified that binder to harden up the product and basically stick it together. The vast majority of our fuels are smokeless. The 
Close the plant's fuels are mainly anthracite and petroleum coke. Anthracite uh, is the main base of, of our products and is naturally smokeless. As it stands, we have it delivered from South Wales by train, two trains a week, uh, week in, week out, all year. And uh, we use uh, over 100,000 tonnes a year. Open fire briquettes, we want more flame. So what we do is we increase the volatility of the coals in there. So we'll use bituminous coals. Um, more than anthracites in, in open fire fuels. And what that will do is uh, give, a, give a nice flame while still giving out the heat output required and still remaining smokeless. The testing uh, of the product in-house at CPL is entirely our decision to try and make the product as good as we can, to as consistent as possible, and we can learn about any variations that are happening and to satisfy the customer, really, that we're doing the right things in respect of what, what they receive. The laboratory uh, department tests all the raw materials that come to site and they produce a, a huge database of all the materials that come to site so we can check that they're all within specification. They test for uh, ash content of uh, raw materials, they test for the volatile content of raw materials and for the sulfur content. And we also test what we call shatter test which basically is to roughly handle the briquettes. And we do that by taking five kilos of full briquettes and throwing them down a six foot metal tube four times to assess what we think the briquettes will look like when they reach the end customer, you know, to replicate the handling that happens thereafter. And we test the finished product for fire performance as well. We, we take the product from each production run and uh, we do a physical fire test. So we actually light a fire and watch all the parameters of that. We check for the heat outputs, we check for the duration of the fire. We check that, you know, it lights initially to a given output within a certain period. This checks that the, that the customer is not lighting the fire and waiting forever for heat. We, we want to make sure we're within a, a set parameter there. It's very important that we, we meet those parameters and it's very rare that we have a fire that does anything different to what we expect because we know the coals that are going in, we have consistent supplies of our raw materials, we've got a consistent process, so we know what we put in is roughly what we're going to get out and we, we test them to reassure ourselves that that's the case. And it's all about taking naturally varying raw materials and making a very consistent product for the customer. The large range of products has come out of the necessity of different appliances out in the market, particularly the European appliances demand a smaller shape and the open fires demand a larger shape. And you know, we have medium sized briquettes for multi fuel stoves, and a lot of these shapes are branded with trademarks or you know, unique shapes that's unique to, to CPL. And what that does is the customer out in the field knows exactly which product they're getting because they can tell, you know, if it's not got a line on that, it's not CPL Super Thick, for example. Um, we, we're very specific that the customer knows what they're buying because they get the briquette with the correct markings on. Compared to uh, old briquetting processes, the, the mild heat treatment process operated at Immingham is, is very environmentally friendly. We're tested regularly for any gases that are in the chimney stacks. We're tested for our water output that leaves site. All of our water leaves site in one point and we actually recycle a lot of water round to uh, parts of our process. The heat that's generated in the ovens is used to provide heat for the drying process. So heat is recycled and gases that are given off in the oven from the, the reaction of molasses hard enough are used as a fuel to provide heat for the drying. In addition, we've uh, we started as a company adding biomass to more and more, particularly olive stone. The carbon dioxide that's generated from burning the biomass is carbon dioxide that the, uh, the biomass has absorbed in growing. So it's not extra CO2 being put into the atmosphere. It's basically putting back what was there already. Um, so it, the biomass within the fuel is carbon neutral. So we recycle gases and we recycle water and there's no coal leaves this site. It doesn't go out in a briquette as well. So there's no waste from the process. There's no coal waste at all. We recycle everything. Now we don't package uh, any coal here at Immingham. Uh, we sell loose into the back of lorries. Around 70,000 ton uh, of our product is packed into bags at our state-of-the-art packing plant at Worksop in Nottinghamshire. 
is a fully automated robotic packing plant which uses multi-heads to weigh exactly the amount of uh, briquettes into each of the varying size bags. Multi-heads have been used in sweet industries for years but CPL scaled it up for to be the first people to use it with, with coal production. Uh, they weigh exactly the amount into each bag as required. That uh, amount then goes down to the form, fill and seal machine where the bag is formed around the, the briquettes and then transferred down the packing line to uh, a robotic stacking machine. The plant is operated entirely by four people. Uh, one person loading the briquettes into the plant, two people monitoring each of the individual lines and then one person taking the finished pallets away into storage. Uh, the storage there at any one time can be up to 11,500 tonnes from which the product is distributed across the whole of the UK. The team at Immingham are uh, a very good experienced team. We've got many people who have passed through their 25 years awards. We will have had about 20 by the end of this year. And that experience is vital to, to what we do, where we are going forward. New people who we bring into the site, we, we allow them to soak up that experience. I think you know, the, the aim and the satisfaction we get is being, being able to make a consistent product time after time. Uh, it, it almost should be seamless that a customer who buys a bag of fuel today, tomorrow, yesterday, last month, you know, last year, that the product should be consistent. And it, it's a challenge for us, but we, we rise to the challenge of, of making sure that that's the case.